Right, hello guys and welcome to this special 40k video. So, as you can see, what I've got for you is my entire Imperial Guard collection all laid out for you. I'm going to be talking you through the whole collection. Uh, it's around 6,000 points. It depends on upgrades, really. Uh, tallying up the sort of upgrades I normally take, I think it's about 6,300. That's just sort of regular upgrades. But then, or maybe 6,400, something around that mark anyway. But then if I take a few extra sort of upgrades here and there, it's really not difficult to do over sort of a, a, a force this size. I've, uh, I've rounded it up to 6,500, and that's what I'm going to be running tomorrow in the Apocalypse game against Eldar. Stay tuned for that battle report uh, coming out soonish. And, yeah, so if you, you know, but equally if you took things bare bones, it would be under that. So approximately 6,000, 6,500, maybe under that, depending on upgrades. Um, but, yeah, 6,500 is what I'm going to be running it as. So, if you are not aware, if you've not followed this channel closely, you can go and look at my series Raising the Regiment, in which we built up this force from, I think originally in the Season 1 this was only 2,000 points. We then built up to 4,000, and in Season 2 we've built up to 6,000. So Season 2 just ended, so if you're not caught up with that, you can go and check that out. But yeah, here is the full army, so let's go and have a look, and I will talk you through what we've got here without further ado. So starting over here, I've got some sort of HQ choice uh, section type units. So we've got Commissar Yarrick. He's one of the few named characters that I have. I think possibly the only one, although I do occasionally take Pask, but then he, he doesn't really have a model, so that's a bit different. Company Command Squads, we've got two of them, and Master of Ornaments in that one as well. I won't go through upgrades and stuff, I'll just show you what, what units I've got. Uh, we've got a Commissar. And uh, we're going to have difficulty focusing. I thought I will uh, zoom in on a few of the the uh, units. And you can just about see him there. But yeah, he's one of my favourite models. I really wanted to show him off. Just because um, <laughs> I love the book. He's reading from a book with his power fist. That's really awesome. But yeah, sorry about the difficulty focusing there, guys. Uh, we'll take us a minute to adjust again. And then over here, four Primera Psychers. Uh, one is... A model, and again, I'm gonna have difficulty focusing, I'm sure. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. The focus, though. I hope that's a comment okay for you guys. But yeah, that's um, Scarlet Witch, I call her, and one of my custom Primera Psychers got her from Hassle Free Miniatures, I believe. And uh, yeah, if you look at her, her dress there, it's probably not too clear, but I have painted like space and like nebula kind of patterns on it. And I think she looks awesome. Regular Primera Psycho you get from Games Workshop, and then two Gandalfs that I proxy as. Primaris Psychers. Now, I will take a, a slight aside here. Some people have said to me, like, oh, Warwick, you cra you're so mental using Gandalf as a Primaris Psyker. Well, I don't think it's unreasonable at all, because if you look, it's an old bloke with a staff who does sort of magic-y psychic powers. Psychic powers are very akin to magic. And these are two models of old blokes with staffs who clearly are using magic-y psychic powers. I don't think it's that ridiculous at all. The only thing that makes people go, oh god, that's so crazy, is because you know who Gandalf is. Imagine you didn't know this was Gandalf. Imagine you'd never seen Lord of the Rings, you'd never played um, Lord of the Rings strategy battle game. You'd just be like, okay, that doesn't look too out of place. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm really happy with that, but uh, <laughs> I always get comments being like, oh, you crazy Warwick, what do, what do you like? And I'm like, I don't think it's that unreasonable. Uh, my rule of proxies is if it looks right, it's fine, and I think they do look right. Anyway, uh, we've got three priests, uh, and I think that sort of rounds out the HQ sort of section there. Um, we have got two tech priests and servitors there, and a fortification with quad gun, so that's an Aegis defense line. But the priests lead us nicely on to the tanks. That's eight Lehman Russes. Usually I run those red ones. The Punisher there, that's normally Pask, and these are two normally Executioners. And then in the background, uh, we've got two Demolishers, two Vanquishers. That one's normally going to be Tank Commander and a Lehman Russ Battle Tank. So uh, let's do troops next. So troops, we've got three platoons. First platoon there with the eight... Um, they're called Armageddon, Steel Lead, and Command Squad. And if, in my fluff, which I won't go into here and I have mentioned before, uh, we're a combined regiment where we, uh, like some Cadians and Steel Legion got really badly mauled and sort of had to combine together. So uh, one day I would like to add a full uh, Steel Legion platoon, but that's long term. And two infantry squads in that platoon. 
Second platoon with all the flamers, two infantry squads in that platoon. Third platoon there with a variety of upgrades and third platoon two squads. And then heavy weapons for those squads, we've got mortars, two sets of auto cannons and las cannons. So quite a, quite a bit of troops, if you look at it sort of in scale, I feel we could do with a bit more troops, but at the same time it's not, it's kind of a nice mix I think this, uh, this collection, I've got a little bit of everything. And then let's go to the bat, let's do the super heavies, the so called brothers of destruction. We've got the <laughs> Bane Blade there with uh, four, four sponsons and this thing's an animal. <laughs> you get five heavy bolter shots twin linked, sorry, not five heavy bolter shots, five heavy bolters twin linked, which is 15 shots re-rolling, which is nice. Demolisher Cannon, obviously, like it, on one of those it's nasty, as like an adornment on this it's even better. Auto Cannon, little bonus, and the Apocalyptic Blast as well. Plus all those Laz cannons, um, so it's it's really nice that I'm a big fan of the this bad boy. Shadow Sword, not the strongest super heavy to be honest. It's not the best choice at all. You only get one D plight for your for your points cost, whereas in other things you get way more. Like it works out as really bad points economy to get the D plate. It's it's not really worth its points. This thing, but at the same time, <laughs> it's a D weapon. You can't really go wrong, and I think it's the coolest looking. Uh, model in the army. I love that long barrel. That's one of the reasons I really love the, the Vanquishers as well. Just the long batter, barrel, one of my favourites. And if we come over here as well, probably not going to be too easy to see, but if you look, there's a little bit of detailing there. So you focus up. Oh, you think you can see that? I think that big is okay. Where it says Tyrant King has the T Rex skull with the crown on it. I think that's really, really cool. And one thing I'm going to start doing is from tomorrow, every super heavy kill this gets, I'm going to chalk up like a mark along the barrel. So it's going to have like tally points, maybe a bit optimistic, maybe it won't ever get any super heavy, heavy kills, but that's what I'm going to start doing for tomorrow. And I will include, like if it kills like a Wraith Knight or something like that, that will count as a super heavy, even though it's not, you know, Lords of War, super heavy, that sort of thing. Um, big nasty horribleness, it can get a point for that. And I'll keep a tally, which would be a good laugh, I think. Um, here we've got sort of artillery, um, we've got a Waverun, new, very new addition, if you watched uh, Raising the Regiment, that was... Uh, the most recent additions are those tanks there in the middle, uh, the Vanquishers and the, the dem one of the Demolishers, the other Demolisher I've had for years, and uh, one of the Tech Priests. But this guy, pretty, <laughs> pretty new addition as well, um, and yeah, really, really looking forward to using him. I have played against him uh, a couple of times, played against uh, Waverins rather. First time using them, but I know what they can do. I'm well aware of these bad boys. I really can't wait to see what he can do. Only worry is he's a little bit fragile. That's the only problem with them. Same with the Basilisks. Big fan of Basilisks, uh, and especially when you put them in the Emperor's Wrath Artillery co uh, Company, which these two, this thing, one of the engines is uh, these guys in you know, a Chimera, who I'll come on to in a second. That's going to be one of the Emperor's Wrath Artillery Companies. And um, yeah, then we can issue, like, ignores cover on the Basilisk. Just becomes an absolute beast. But yeah, never underestimate the Basilisk. People don't really seem to take them. Big fan of them. Big fan of them. Especially because of the range. You can just... And the fact they don't have to directly fire. You can just thwack them miles behind your lines, behind a big building, and just sit there and plug away. Uh, but yeah, suffers from the same problem as uh, the Waver. And both of them are a little bit fragile. But uh, yeah. And then the big daddy. The big dog. <laughs> the beast incarnate. We've got the... Death Strike missile. Absolutely love this thing. The best thing about it isn't what it actually does. The best thing about it is it makes your opponent do things. Because your opponent sees this thing and goes, Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, panic, panic, panic. Gotta take it out, gotta take it out, gotta take it out. And just charges, like, you know, and like they try and desperately to take it out. And um, maybe if they try desperately to take it out, they concentrate fire on that when they really should be thinking about other things, uh, or maybe they make some bold move or they charge something forward in a desperate attempt to take it and it's really not, not worth their while sometimes. You know, they end up losing more than they would if they just sort of took it. Uh, but, that said, Apocalyptic Mega Blast, Strength 10, AP1 ignores cover. Woohoo! It is a spicy meatball. The only problem with it is the rolling to see if it goes off. Last time I used him, rolled a 1 on turn 2, so he didn't go off till turn 3. So, it's, you know, in that amount of time, Manticore, think of what you took, like, a Manticore, just steady firing each turn, whereas this thing, you know, uh, may not even go off. 
and then when it does go off you're done it's just uh, basically all it is is a heavy bolter and something you could use to tank shock I guess but yeah so kind of mix on the death strike I do like it but it's it, I am aware of its limitations then we've got a couple of chimeras this is something I feel the, the collection could do with uh, really being bulked out on more chimeras I feel because Right now, if I want to go down the armoured route, I've got enough tanks I can go proper armoured, you know. Uh, I can go down that, that route, armoured spearhead. I've got enough infantry that I can do the sort of infantry wave, and I've also got infantry over there, we'll come on to in a second. But I haven't really got enough so I can just do, like, mechanised infantry. I can't, you know, if I had sort of three more of these, I could do a proper sort of veterans in chimeras and company command squads in chimeras and... Stormtroopers in Chimeras. I go down that route. At the moment, I've only got three. So that's something to add in the future. Um, and then we'll do these guys first. Free Vendettas. Awesome, awesome unit. One of the best there is, really, for the guard. I really, really like these. Free Twinlink Last Cannons, Flyers, what more can be said? Although, with that said, if you play Army from the Skies, they now suck because they don't have Skyfire anymore, which really, really, really hurts them. Like, that, that, make, that makes, like, the guards... Like, the guard are in trouble if that happens, because then we, these things aren't anti-air anymore, so they kind of suck. Uh, the Hydra, I'm not really a fan of, because it doesn't have Interceptor, so if you just take, like, one Hydra, they can just fly on something and just pop it, so that, that, that kind of sucks. Uh, and then the only real option is stuff like the Quad Gun, so really, really bad for the guard if you play Army from the Skies, but I don't want to get too much of a tangent, but on my channel, uh, we've agreed we're not going to do Army from... Uh, Army of the Skies? Death from the Skies. Sorry. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, we've agreed we're not doing that, and everyone seems to be agree with us. It seems like that, that um, supplement hasn't been received too well. But I digress. And then over here, we've got some more sort of elite infantry units. So these guys uh, are two squads of veterans, uh, who are troops, obviously, but I've put them with the more sort of elite units, because they kind of feel more like elites, don't they, veterans? And if you look... Um, this guy, these guys I've done red shoulder pads to like mark them as squad one, and these guys blue shoulder pads to mark them as squad two, and I think that looks pretty cool. Um, and this guy, these are free melters normally, these guys are more anti-infantry, like flamers and grenade launchers. Free rattlings, free rattlings, five rattlings, god I'm absolutely making a pig of this guys. But yeah, five rattlings, cool unit, not the most competitive probably, but at the same time, they're a lot of fun, so do like them. And then finally, we got two squads of... 10 Stormtroopers and a Stormtrooper Command Squad, which is just awesome. And uh, yeah, I'd like to be able to put these guys all in Chimeras and these guys all in Chimeras. So I'd need at least another two Chimeras, but that's, uh, that's a project for another time. So overall, guys, this is my entire Imperial Guard collection. As I said, around the 6,000 point mark. I'm fielding it at 6,500, but if you wanted to strip upgrades, you could probably you know get it below 6,000 if you wanted. But um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a collection that I've... Uh, Pretty proud of. I think it's uh, come along well. It's been uh, the culmination of quite a few years of building it up. I think I started Imperial Guard in probably five years ago, maybe. I don't know, something like that. And um, yeah, yeah, I quite like it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Um, and I'll be sure to get back to you soon with another video. Oh, and do give us a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, guys. I really would appreciate that. Make sure you like me on Facebook, and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye for now.